All right, who the fuck did I marry? Part two. So we both um, put on the table what it is that we wanted. We both had established we were dating for marriage. We were not dating just to date. We were not trying to be friends with benefits and none of that. Um, so maybe because I am a Gen Z, a Zillennial, but I think older people are in this thing, especially people who are like in their 40s, like she said, or in their 30s, and they've been divorced already. Because my aunt is the same way. She's rushed into like her last two marriages because she just wanted to be married. She wanted to be married. She did. She wanted to lock down and she wanted to, but she already tried it before. It's like, it's, it's always the people who have been married before already. It's always the people who have been married before already and divorced who are trying to rush into the next relationship. It's like, okay, you were divorced, that didn't go well, but now you're dating for marriage. And I get it, you know, that's what you were used to, but I feel like people are more at risk to rush into their second marriage, if not their third marriage, if their first marriage was very unsuccessful, especially when the time is ticking and you're over 30 or you're in your 30s going into your 40s. I can imagine how the pressure is on, but it's it's a red flag to me. I'm sorry, it's another red flag. Like, y'all sitting up here emphasizing that you guys are dating to be married. What happened to just saying, do you want to get married one day? Somebody at my age who's never gotten married before, me and my boyfriend talked about it like, look, we would like to be married one day. That's cute. But were we both sitting there emphasizing, yeah, I'm dating for marriage. I'm dating for marriage. I want to marry my best friend. Staring this person down. It just makes you feel like you're on the spot. Like y'all have to get married now because y'all both emphasize that you guys are dating to get married. I think that is just such an unhealthy precursor to rushing into shit. And y'all shouldn't have said it like that. Why don't y'all just say, I would like to get married one day. Or he should have said, I would like to get married again one day. But to say, I'm dating to get married. There's some pressure there that, honestly, somebody my age, he lucky he wasn't dating somebody my age because they would have fucking ran. It's just that emphasis is just uncalled for and unnecessary for them to have said that because obviously it's, it should have been, okay, do you want to get married one day? Are you looking for a serious relationship? Yes. Why do we have to emphasize we're dating to get married? Um, so the, the dinner at Cheesecake Factory went really well. We laughed, we joked, we talked about people, which, um... <laughs> is kind of up my alley my sense of humor it was just, it was a good vibe so at the end of the date or excuse me at the end of dinner we sat in his car and he played this song for me by john legend i don't know the name of the song by the t well by the time this video posts i will put the name at the bottom i can't remember the song i just remember that john legend was talking about i think i met my wife tonight and I thought it was a sign. So I was like, oh my God. So anyway, we ended up sitting in the car talking just about life and experiences until about midnight. So during this conversation, he again is telling me how it was, you know, what it was like living in California, how he went out there. He went to San Diego State. He played football for San Diego State. Um, he talked about how, you know, life what he loved it out there so he stayed um that's when he joined the company um and then he explained that he also did arena football but only did it for about two or three years he claims that while he was doing arena football the team that he was on won a championship but again keep in mind i don't know anything about arena football so i was like okay i didn't know that they had championships and he was like you know he got a little offended like yeah they got championships and you know he was on that team so he talked to me my thing is i'm gonna be honest with you i will be honest with you guys right quick my question is why he didn't tell her everything about arena football in the beginning or why didn't she ask all the questions that she needed to know to understand that they had championships or that Hey, this is how the game goes my thing is i would get offended too if i'm asked i'm telling you about something that i like and you're like oh i didn't even know that was a thing or i didn't know that was part of it and i'm like yeah bitch it was if you would ask then you would have known but my thing is i take i put them both at fault for that because if this person says they don't know anything about arena football why are not why are you not doing your due diligence by telling them this is what it is this is how the game is played. This is the goal. This is the team set up. This is the breakdown. Why are you not breaking down what this is? Because she said she knew about NFL in college, but this shit she never heard of. Me neither. Sis, I don't even know nothing about it, but I'm curious enough to be like, what is that? How do you play? 
What is this team? I'll ask questions. My boyfriend will tell me a little bit of something about what he likes to do or gambling or football or sports and I'll do my due diligence. So what is that again? How do you get that? What is that called? I'm going to ask questions, bitch. So as women, we need to be curious enough to ask the right questions and ask the appropriate questions that are going to help us understand and comprehend the situation that we're in and also the situation of what that person is talking about. Especially if they're a potential partner. Why are you sitting up there listening to a man talk about arena football on a, on a second or third conversation and you haven't done your due diligence to ask questions around it to make it make more sense to you? Me about how he worked at Apple. He worked um, something in the IT area of Apple but it was in the store again it was one of those it's like when i tell people i used to work at amazon I, I really wasn't paying much attention to it why so we talked about all that we talked about uh, we talked deeply into what happened with the ex-wife it's because i asked he was not volunteering all this information so in other words okay girl so you you didn't want to ask about that damn arena football but you wanted to ask questions about his ex i'll be honest with you as women it's okay to know about the past relationship or know what made the relationship turn the way that it did but i feel like for a healthy relationship knowing like certain things about that relationship is like uncalled for so when i'm asking when i asked my boyfriend about his past relationship there was one specific thing that i wanted to know from that question i didn't want to know her name i didn't know i didn't need to know what she looked like i didn't need to know how old she was and i think she's on the right page because she wanted to ask what went wrong with y'all relationship i think knowing and asking that question of what went wrong or why did you guys break up that is a that is a decent enough question to ask but the fact that she didn't want to ask about that arena football girl, what? The reason why you ask those questions or ask that specific question about somebody's past relationship and only that question is because you want to know what are some issues or what are some faults that this person has that, that you're trying to vet? What are some faults that they may have? What are their strengths? What are their weaknesses? And knowing what that last partner did, if it was their fault, if they were at fault for that, these things are important to know because you want to know okay was it your fault when you ended this relationship was it your fault did you cheat were you going out to the club too much did your ex ask you nicely did you did they try to make it work with you but you kept fucking up or was it them and knowing the difference between if it was him or the ex that's very important but i feel like that's the most we should go into it now if they're defensive about it or their response will be very telling about what that may mean or entail i, I get very uncomfortable when men start talking about their ex a lot and that's and i'm with her on that i'm sorry to keep pausing it but i would get uncomfortable too if if my boyfriend kept talking about his ex a lot that's why i don't even ask questions about what her name was what she looked like because you're and in, you're inviting those type of you're just inviting that type of energy but asking asking the right questions and then leaving it at that letting them talk cool that's not what happened. I was asking questions because I was really trying to figure out, okay, is this a, are you ready for a relationship or are you still um, missing her? So we talked about that. We talked about my exes. That was a mistake I made because I talked about how I dated at one point in time, somebody I worked with that will come back later um and he seemed real cool about it. he was like you know that was before me and blah 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 um so the conversation was good midnight comes and um i go home yes i went home we ended up talking talking and talking mind you our first date was march 7th and within about two and a half weeks brian kemp our governor shut georgia down we were about to, we were going to be on lockdown so during those two and a half weeks, we talked every day. We went out again at Red Lobster. Um, I don't even, I remember Red Lobster. Um, but everything was going great. The issue was, where are we going to quarantine? So the question was, are we going to quarantine at his place? Which he had like a studio type of situation like it clearly where he was staying um i was like it's like a studio apartment but he kept telling me like this is temporary because i'm looking for a house like he showed me he showed me the email from the from a woman who worked at the company 
where she was out on maternity leave, but she was she was putting him in contact <clears throat> with a realtor to help him find a town home or a single family house. So I was just like, okay, this is definitely temporary. Like he's not trying to stay here long term. And she was apologizing in the email. I'm so sorry. You know, this should have been taken care of before you got here, but it wasn't. Da, 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 da. I saw the email. I saw the email. I read it. I read the email. Um, so the decision was, are you, we going to quarantine at the studio or are we going to quarantine in my house? First mistake I made. Well, there's a lot, but this was a mistake I made. So ladies, caution moment. During one of our dates, um, because keep in mind, in those two weeks, we were seeing each other quite a bit. Um, Nothing physical or anything like that. Just two people who were, who I thought were really on some, all right, let's see if this is going, if this, if this is going to grow into something. He came to my house. When he came to my house, I had a three bedroom, two and a half bath townhome. Me, yes, ma'am. I need to move to motherfucker Augusta, Georgia. She had a three bedroom, two and a half bathroom, living by herself. What did she say she did again? Wow, that I don't even know. I can't. Wow, girl, you don't need these niggas. Fuck these niggas. You guys know I would love. I love saying that because, girl, what? I know it gets lonely in that house. I bet. I bet it gets very lonely in that big ass house, girl. But you got a three bedroom, two and a half bath. And this nigga got a studio? Oh, girl. Okay. Well, she said it was a mistake she made. Let's see. He was in his studio. Now, I'm telling you guys all of this in in order of how it happened. So some, t- some things I'm probably going to insert what I was thinking and the mistake I made. Can I turn this off? No. Okay, I still need that. Um, and I say that to say that I did not realize inviting him to my home um, probably made his eyes go, oh shit, she's a keeper. She got this three bedroom, two and a half bath townhouse and I'm in like a little studio. Yeah, let me, let me, let me go ahead and pursue this. What I need to do to quarantine here. Wow, girl, a fucking leech. Mm, I can't stand the leech. Oh, I can't. Oh, just made it made my my fist crumble up a little bit. But the reason why I just had to stop this right here is because, oh man, man, man. If he sees that he has less than you, girl, it just gives him a reason to leech off of you. Like I have a, I had a friend who met this guy, and I don't know which came first, honey, but she got a cute little apartment. She got a cute little be- uh, two bedroom apartment, and this dude has an apartment too. But get this no electricity no running water for real nothing like it's his house is dark like he don't have no electricity in there they turned the shit off because he don't pay the rent so of course where the fuck they be at most of the time her house and he's stealing from her and her mom keeps telling her don't keep this nigga in this house but he don't got nowhere else to go of course if a man if you give the man an opportunity to leech he's going to leech he's going to leech he's going to do it and he's going to do it and he's going to think about himself so i knew it i'm like girl you got a three bedroom he got a studio the decision was made quarantine at my house so we the state went on lockdown he came and stayed with me um in my home and for the most part be in the initial beginning it was fine it was it was fine the reason why i hesitate is because i grew up in the church so for me it was really like an internal struggle of bruh you always said you would never live with a guy unless he was your husband and now you living with a dude and he ain't your husband like it was it was a struggle for me because i knew better and, I, and don't come for me. I'm just telling you the way I grew up. It was like that. It was not sitting right with me. But at the same time, I didn't want to quarantine by myself. I did not want to. So. And look at that. See, that's what I was about to say. That quarantine really did something to people. It really transformed a lot of people who were expecting that transformation. Um, a lot of couples got together, broke up around this time. A lot of people didn't want to be alone, whatever. 
quarantining, right? The fact that she said that she didn't want to be alone, that is the worst reason to bring, to keep somebody around you. You didn't want to quarantine alone. I'm telling you, that reason alone will be the reason why you invite or more prone to invite manipulative leeches like him into your life because you're desperate because you don't want to be alone. I take that as de being desperate. I'm sorry. But if you're going to invite somebody into your house, knowing that you have morals and ethics that go against that, all because you don't want to be alone, it's dangerous. It's very dangerous. You know, we should stop acting out of desperation because that's what you get. You get the bottom of the barrel crab. So women, this is a cautionary tale. Do not do it. Don't do it. Just because you want to be alone, stay alone. God is doing, doing transformation in your life. He's doing works in your life. If you don't want to be alone, you're choosing to be around people because you don't want to be alone. I'm telling you, you're invited, you're invited some negativity into your life. So there we go. Um, so he moved in. We talked about the bills. Let me clear something up that I said in the other video where I said he paid all the bills. He paid all the household bills. He did not pay my car payment, my cell phone, or my car insurance. He paid the rent because my rent at the time was less than a thousand dollars. Um, he paid the use girl where the fuck are you living at rent was where were you living at rent was under a thousand dollars wow 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 that is very interesting wow that's cool three bedroom georgia and he's paying all the rent for just the household so he's paying the rent cool that's cute utility bills and on and so when he's telling me that he's a regional manager i was like wow okay so you got money um <laughs> and so he paid he paid all the household bills so my check really was just taking care of me myself and I and I am not this is where it's not gonna make me look good but it's the truth it was intoxicating to not have to worry financially about how to pay the bills it was a wonderful feeling and so I kind of pushed to the side the fact that, yeah, you shacking up because it's like, but your page, you don't have to worry right now. Like he's, he's taking care of all of April's bills before April even comes. Cause this was still March. So we're living together and I'm cooking, I'm cleaning. He's helping to cook and clean. And then we have a conversation about house is he still going to buy a house just for him or is he going to buy a house where it's for us because we are going to try to make this thing work be official get married have a family so the question now on the table is what are we going to do because i didn't want to stay in um riverdale georgia i did not want to raise a family there i refused to have a baby um, in Clayton County. So the decision was made, let's start looking for a house for both of us. Remember, he was already looking for a house for him, but then he was like, you know what, we're together, I plan to marry you, let's look for a, for a, a family home for the two of us. He was like, this is how much I was approved for. That's when he showed me the Chase paperwork um, it was a letter stating that he, and it had the Chase emblem at the top. He showed me a letter stating that he was approved for 700 and All right, part three, who the fuck did I marry? So this is when he showed me a letter from Chase with the Chase logo at the top stating that he had been approved for a mortgage for, excuse me, for a $750,000 mortgage or a $750,000 house. Let me know if y'all want to continue to see reactions to this series so let's continue part four so he was like we can't go over 750 and i said i remember asking him can you afford the mortgage on a 750 thousand dollar house because i know i can't this is when he explains to me i told you how i played arena football i invested my money really well so he said, I have money that will help pay for the mortgage. He was like, we're good. Like, I'm, I'm financially, I am okay. Um, he was like, that's why I'm able to get approved for $750,000 mortgage. So he told me that his money 
was in different savings accounts. He said he had an account with Chase Bank. No, I did not physically see the savings account. Okay, girl, red flag, red flag on the play. He's telling you that he can afford a $750,000 mortgage on the house. And he invested his money in arena football very well. And he's a regional manager. And he has several savings accounts. Now, under these circumstances, this is a red fucking flag. So let's keep it a bean, keep it a stack. And the fact that she wasn't able to confirm that he had these savings accounts, because it says clearly says here, no, I did not physically see the savings accounts. You're about to buy a house with somebody. You know that you're good to go. You know that you can afford it. But where is the due diligence? Because I was about to say in the last video, y'all was still in March. Y'all was still in March. Ladies, don't marry a man after a month of knowing him. Don't marry a man after two months of knowing him. Don't marry a man after three months of knowing him. If y'all need an exact date, okay? Because it seems like some women need exact dates. Like, when should I marry him then? What should I be looking for? I'm going to be honest with you. I am in my third year. I'm in my third year of a relationship. Am I thinking about marrying him? No. No. I want to spend the rest of my life with him, of course, but we're not thinking about marriage right now. Why? I mean, maybe, again, maybe because y'all in a different bracket, maybe because y'all got the money, maybe because y'all a little further in y'all careers, maybe because y'all older, but marrying somebody after a month, I don't care how old you are. I don't care how much money both of y'all make. I don't care. Marrying somebody and looking to buy a house with somebody and start a family with somebody after a month, that will never end well. I'm sorry, it never ends well. And on top of that, she hasn't even confirmed that this man has this money to begin with. She's being sold dreams. She's being sold this dream. And she's just accepting that it's a dream all because he's paying your rent. All because he's paying your little under $1,000 rent. And that was intoxicating that you didn't have to worry about paying for rent. That is so weird to me. Like, ladies, you better be comfortable being independent. And if a man wants to come along and help with that, cool. But don't let it distract you. Don't let it get to your brain and, and like... <laughs> bank. He had an account with U.S. Bank. And he had an offshore account. This is what he told me. Flip paycheck to paycheck. I, again, I was like, okay, that's whatever. I said, so you have the, so you have the money... Um, to pay for to pay for a home yeah i was about to say the way that he just told her well everybody knows that you have offshore account no everybody don't fucking know people who make their money who are tax paying citizens who pay their taxes who file their taxes in the united states they do it why do you why do you care so much about taxes to get that extra little chunk of money like i don't know that i would have took that as a very condescending statement and i would have taken that the wrong way and i would have started second guessing is this something i really want to do or do i want to stay comfortable in my three bedroom two and a half bathroom house sometimes it's just it's a no-brainer but let's continue i'm also holding in my hand a letter from chase saying that he was approved for seven hundred and fifty thousand. so i went off of what i saw so we contacted a realtor. I won't say his name, but man, if he ever, ever sees this TikTok, I owe this man such an apology. But we contacted a realtor in <clears throat> who was based in Cobb County because I was very adamant I wanted to move back to Marietta, Smyrna area um, in Cobb County, Georgia. He was fine with that. His whole attitude was... You know, you're going to be my wife, happy wife, happy life. So we met a realtor. I, I would find houses that I wanted to tour. Keep in mind that um, this was COVID. So at the time, we could not tour a home. It would, have to, it would have to be a virtual tour. So this particular realtor, we found a house in Douglasville, Georgia. Not Cobb County, but nevertheless, it's in Douglasville. I was fine with Douglasville. So we found a house in Douglasville, Georgia. The realtor did a, um, a, a uh, FaceTime tour of the house. The house was, it was really a nice, it was a nice home. Four, five bedrooms, four baths. So we did a FaceTime tour of the home. And the home was listed, I believe, roughly 400 and something thousand. I really like the house. I could see myself living there. I could see us living there. I could see us with the kid there. This is now April, just for timeline purposes. This is April. So that shit is crazy to me how she went from March 7th to having a first date with this man 
now y'all in April and you're talking about you can see yourself living in this house with this man and you're about to buy a house with him and you can see yourself living in this house with kids with him. That to me just rubs me such the wrong way because as women, we got to do better. We have to do better. We have to stop getting so infatuated with that picket fence life. Like it takes a lot more to get to that picket fence life than just imagining it and then seeing signs and rushing into it. Like it's so much work that has to be put into this and also vetting. She didn't bet this man and you're up there a month later, sis. Like we got to do better. Oh, he really liked the house. He was like, you know what? We'll put an offer in on the house. He was like, if you like it, because again, it was COVID. We weren't going to be able to see the house in person because the family still live there. So he said, um, I'll put an offer in. We'll see if it's accepted. I said, okay. So he puts an offer in. He's telling me he put an offer in. I need to clarify some things he told me and the things that I actually saw. So for this house in Douglasville, he told me he was putting an offer in. The realtor would call me because one what made her feel like she could trust his words so much was it because he was six two was it because he was paying her rent was it because of that tire that he fixed because those are not good enough reasons i'm sorry <laughs> those are not good enough reasons to just trust somebody's word on something because they paid for your rent for a month i just really want to know what made her trust this man's words so much at the time a woman who makes a good living for herself with a two-bedroom house is now about to settle. Because one thing that the realtor told us, he was like, if the woman likes the house, typically the house is going to get bought. So he kind of dealt with me a bit more than he did my ex-husband. Um, and again, this is April 2020. This is before we got married. So at the time, he was my boyfriend. So the realtor was calling me and was like, hey, you know, I'm... I'm I put the offer in and what they're asking for um, is proof of funds and I, and I know any I don't I did not know anything at this time about buying a house so I was like hey you probably need to talk to him because I'm not even listed on the mortgage like from the paperwork I saw it was only in his name so he um, he called him I guess they talked I was not there, um, but I'm assuming that they had talked. So the boyfriend is coming, my ex is coming home saying, yeah, I talked to so-and-so. I sent him over the paperwork. The offer was approved and <clears throat> they are going to try to do a virtual closing. First, we got to do an inspection. If the inspection goes all well, then we have to do a virtual closing. He t also told me that he put down earnest money on the home. He put down, I believe, 5000 He said, I, I just transferred the money over to the realtor's uh, account or whatever um, so that it could be earnest money for the house. So I'm just like, okay, great. He was like, so realistically, this is April. We should be able to get in that house um, by June. Okay, no problem. So... This is what he told me. About three or four days later, I get a phone call from the from the realtor, and the realtor is like, "Hey, I'm just checking to see what you know what you guys want to do about that house." So I was confused. I'm at work, um, and I said, "Oh, I I was told that he put an offer in," and the realtor was like, "He did." I didn't know that he put an offer in and I said well why wouldn't you know like he told me he put the offer in and he um, he had paid earnest money five thousand dollars earnest money and so the realtor was like well let me call him and find out what's going on with that because I didn't know anything about it so red flag of course red fucking flag that realtor has no reason to lie sweetie and i see why i can see why she feels like she owes this realtor apology because i feel like she's about to blow up on him taking this pathological liar side but i feel like there's so many cracks and it's too many cracks in a pathological liar's lies to not see it i'm sorry yes they lie like like it, the lie rolls off their tongue like butter but at the end of the day, if it don't make sense, then it don't make sense. And in this situation, the realtor is acting confused because he's obviously confused because that nigga never called him back. But 
I'm curious to see how she's about to handle this. So I call him and he's and he in true narcissistic nature he flips the script and he like goes off he's like cussing going off like he shouldn't excuse me I have the hiccups he shouldn't be calling you if he has a question he should call me because I'm the one that's on a mortgage he was like and now it's you know it's gonna be an issue and I said well did you put the offer in with him or not and he said, no, I did not put the offer in with him. I put the offer in with a friend of mine who is a realtor so I can give him the business. <sighs> that don't make no damn sense. How are you about to give your friend who's a realtor the offer when this original realtor was the one that set y'all up with the house? She, she had an all opportunity to step back. Like, this is before she signed paperwork. This is before she got married. This is before there was a contractual agreement that y'all are partners in crime. I'm. It's just like, okay, girl, what is going on here? So, I never, heard, I did not hear from that realtor again. So, I was just like, is the house under contract or is it not? He was like, yes, the house is under contract. This is what, this is how crazy things work out. About three days later, on Realtor.com, I'm looking at the house because I was trying to figure out in my mind how I'm going to decorate. It shows the house is under contract. So, show my boyfriend. My boyfriend's like, I told you it was under contract. He was like, I, I, like did you not believe me? And I ain't had the heart to say, hell no, I didn't believe you. <laughs> like, it seemed too good to be true. Um, but once I saw the house was under contract, I absolutely believe that, okay, this, it's under contract with him. Like, yeah, we're about to do inspection. We are about to move. Pathical, people who lie like it's none of their business, they really have a very interesting way of showing face. Even when it comes to things as big as houses. Because my mom dated a pathological liar, a man who has bipolar, a man who definitely lies like it's not his damn business. And I remember him giving us a tour of a whole big ass house. And my mom, it checked out to her as a grown woman at the time with kids. She thought that we were ready to move into this house. I thought it too, because why? Because he toured, he gave us a tour of this house. He showed us this house. Like we were able to sit in this house for as long as we wanted touring the house. But it was all a lie. It was all a lie. The house was never sold, never bought, nothing. Like, I don't know how he did it, but pathological liars really have a way of showing face. And if it makes sense from what you see, they can make a whole lie based off of your eyes. They say seeing is believing. They will run that fucking term, that saying down to the ground, y'all. What you see is what you believe. And she's going off what she's seeing and not using her common sense that may also could equate and add to this situation. But let's continue. It's a move. Um... And so we had driven by the house because, again, keep in mind, a family's still living there. So we had driven by the house. At this point, he was like, I want us to start looking for furniture so that way we can go ahead and order it. So when, when it's time to move, the furniture is ready because, you know, it takes like six to eight weeks sometimes um, for furniture to be delivered if they don't have it in stock. Like, he was, he was very methodical in planning and saying, this is what we need to do. So we started going to Home, Home Depot, Lowe's, um, because we had a printout of what the sellers were going to take. They were going to take the appliances. He had a printout. Let me be clear. He had a printout. So it said on there that they were going to take the appliances. So we needed to get a new stove, um, new refrigerator, new microwave, all that stuff. So we went to Home Depot and Lowe's and I, I went ham. I chose all these new appliances and here's where we get into the shopping. All right, part three, who the fuck? All right, part four. Okay, y'all, I know that we're getting into the juicy nitty gritty, but I'm gonna have to break this up into two videos. I will wait to watch the rest of this for the next video, but um, wow, wow, wow. I'm very invested in this story. I would like to see what happens next. So I may or may not make another video pertaining to 
these next parts. I hope you guys are invested too. We can probably make another part two to this reaction. Because like I said, girl, what? Like after a month, after a month, that's crazy, right? So if you guys want parts five through seven, then go ahead and give me a comment and or like this video or let me know. Let's see another part two to this. I hope you guys are staying blessed, right? And I'm going to see y'all in the next video, y'all. We, yeah, we out in this bitch, period. Fraudulent scam mail, this that soul feeder. What you got inside that well, this that.